so let us see the extraction of aluminium for ICSA class 10th so basically extraction of aluminium happens in two parts so first is the Weyers process the second is the Hal Harold's process now we'll individually go through both of them in detail so this is the slavers that we need to cover so first is the chemical method for purifying bauxite so whatever bauxite that you mine in the first phase it has to be purified and then in electrolytic extraction basically from stage one you will get alumina alumina this alumina al2o3 would be subjected to this electrolytic cell so broadly this is how the process looks like this is your syllabus and uh, now let us start looking at uh, the the flow chart so this is the flow chart now it has uh, various steps we'll discuss the temperature pressure etc in detail but first i'll just go through the broad outline i'll give you a bird's eye view of whole of the process so let me show you some uh, real life uh, examples first so for indian context gujarat mineral development corporation uh, gujarat is one of the places where you will find bauxite mr cb have you done this in geography yes sir so bauxite is basically al2o3 2h2o and of course when it is mined it will have impurities the main impurities that you will find in bauxite would be ferric oxide ferric oxide and silica and silica basically this red color that you see in these bauxite ores it is due to ferric oxide it's a compound of iron and silica is basically red mitti so in the first process the mining which happens you will have these two impurities which have to be removed mr cb any doubt till here no doubt so this is one of the government owned uh, uh, mines which take out bauxite and these are the places can you see these places so this is yeah. where in india we will find gujarat mineral development corporation operating okay now this is how the mining looks like uh, mr cb can you see this yes sir so all this red color is due to the ferric oxide so this is what we are discussing now this bauxite which you have seen from the from the mines which will come those bauxite it will be crushed in these crushers and this bauxite will be taken to a digester digester in this digester naoh will be added can you see mr cb yes sir okay can you comfortably see or should i uh, zoom it no i can comfortably see okay so this is a this is step 1 number 1 now when naoh is added basically what happens is that bauxite the al2o3 part the al2o3 part that is soluble in naoh for a simple reason that it is a amphoteric oxide amphoteric oxide so amphoteric oxides we know they react with both acids as well as bases but the other two which are oxides of iron and silica they don't do any reaction with any of us that is why in this initial stages in these initial stages what will be happening is that slowly the uh, i think i'll mark it clearly i'll mark it like this so in these cases what will happen is that from the bauxite from the bauxite you will be taking out these impurities due to the difference in chemical nature of the oxides of aluminium iron and silica uh, and, and and silica mr cb any doubt no no okay so of course we will be doing this again in detail but i just wanted to sh show you what is happening so do you see this uh, red mud residue this red mud residue yes sir so this is where i am removing the 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 iron impurities as well as the silica impurities now then i'll take the feed to this precipitator in this precipitator basically what i am doing is that this is the product that i will receive this product when reacts with water forms aluminium hydroxide aluminium hydroxide you see this aluminium hydroxide yes sir aluminium hydroxide is insoluble in water so here this compound which was formed was soluble in water but aluminium hydroxide is insoluble in water so using the precipitate i'll take aluminium hydroxide out from this then this feed of aluminium hydroxide will go to this calciner this calciner is nothing except heating the aluminium hydroxide at very high temperatures so that you get al2o3 and the water uh, basically you are removing water from this compound mr cb any doubt till here no doubt no. so once you have alumina this is the alumina that you want now the process the process of digestion settling calcination basically this leg of the this leg of the process this leg of the process this is called the beers process have you understood yes sir now after beers process once you have got alumina then this alumina would be subjected to electrolysis any doubt no doubt no. so this alumina feed is taken to this electrolysis 
and this is the second part of your syllabus which is the hal herolds herolds process so see be any doubt in there no doubt so fundamentally fundamentally there are two broad things which are happening that is what your syllabus is also saying saying first is the beers process the second is the hal herolds process so first is the chemical method of purifying bauxite basically you will be purifying bauxite here and the alumina which is generated alumina which is generated will be taken to the second process of electrolytic extraction any doubt in there no doubt actually i wanted to show you another thing so if you look at this uh, this website is again nalco's website it is one of the navratna of uh, government of india national aluminium corporation now this is how the bauxite mining takes place so the first step is bauxite mining this is where you you know see bauxite mining happens so if you see 300 million tons over quality mineralogy this and that and the second process is alumina refinery refinery is the process for which beers process is used can you see this photograph yes sir so now if you see alumina refinery is located at odisha approximately 14 km from the bauxite mine so the bauxite mine is nearby that uh, that uh, purification plant can you see these photos yes so can you see this word digestion can you see this word yes sir so all these things are i just wanted to show you the practical utility of whatever you are uh, reading in your chemistry book and after this this will, this will be the electrolytic process the electrolytic yeah one another interesting thing that i wanted to show you was that the alumina produced is used to meet company's requirements for production of primary aluminum at smelter the surplus alumina is sold to third parties third parties in the export markets so what i'm trying to tell you is that the alumina which is produced a part of the alumina is also exported to other countries so these two are can be different uh, can have different utilities and here you have aluminum smelting which is taking place smelting is nothing except the electrolysis you see all these uh, these uh, giant structures this is yes, where sir. the can you see this alumina is converted into primary aluminum through smelting process using electrolytic addition so these are the pot lines so you'll have these pots where you will have aluminum can you see this this is one of the pot yes sir. this is can you see this yes sir so if you see 50000 tons per annum export oriented road product with nalco so lot of uh, lot of export is also taking place any doubt till here no doubt okay and uh, just to add these are the these are the port facilities which are available now if you see uh, another interesting thing that you see you can export alumina and you can import caustic soda from vizag vishakhapatnam have you got the gist of uh, the process yes sir so let us come back to our uh, syllabus requirement okay have you understood uh, have you understood the gist of the process yes sir so digesting settling calcination is part of concentration of ore which is called the beers process the electrolysis part is called the hal herolds process okay the first part the purification of ore the impure bauxite that you get it is crushed pulverized and magnetic separation basically uh, this is where this is this is where the process will happen now this part is just purification of the ore the ore that you have received after that the main things happen happen and of course because iron is one of the iron is one of the impurity iron compound of iron is one of the impurities that is why you see magnetic separation also here any doubt till here no doubt now here the reactions etc will start and these are the important uh, things that we have to take care of so first is conversion of bauxite to NaAl O2 now one thing that you need to understand is that sodium aluminate the name of the compound is sodium aluminate now one thing that you would have understood in the salt chapter was that sodium compounds are always soluble do you remember yes sir and this compound is on insoluble do you remember yes sir so this is what i was explaining you in the beginning of the lecture that in the first part in beers process in first part we take the difference in solubility of the compounds of sodium and the, compo uh, the compounds of sodium and the compounds of uh, the the hydroxide compounds any doubt till here no no so al2o3 would be soluble in naoh but this ferric oxide and silica won't be and that is why they will get separated because al2o3 will react with naoh to form a soluble naolt uh, naalo2 sodium aluminate but ferric oxide and silica would not react and therefore they can be separated easily any doubt till here no no now these are the steps this is a reaction and this is the these are the conditions which you will have to remember so this is your bauxite you have added caustic soda to it you will get sodium aluminate and water time and again i have told that this is a compound of sodium that is why it is soluble the temperature is maintained at 150 to 200 degree centigrade to increase the solubility the process takes 1 to 2 hours and it is done under pressure any doubt till here no no okay so this reaction mixer whatever you get the reaction mixer it is filtered and to collect sodium aluminate and the rest precipitates so after that you take the sodium aluminate you take the sodium aluminate 
in this process basically what you want is you want uh, aluminium hydroxide to get precipitated so if you see the temperature requirement has dropped now in the first step you wanted the solub solution to take solubility to increase the factor of solubility that is why you had increased the temperature but now what you want is that the precipitation should take place and another thing is that if you see this process will take two days and aluminium hydroxide will precipitate out any doubt till here no doubt no. crystals of aluminium hydroxide are added to which act as seeds any doubt till here no doubt no. basically this is where this is where you will be generating aluminium hydroxide this is what is called a precipitator and the temperature is taking at 50 to 60 degrees celsius and this process will take around two days which will be any doubt no doubt no. Uh, I have another link. If you are interested, I'll post these uh, links in the in the description box also. I have another link if you want to see the the colors etc. in a colorful manner. So this is how bauxite looks like, and this is how aluminium powder looks like. It is a white powder. Can you see this? And this is how aluminium will look like. Uh, yes, they have given a uh, fun fun fact: four tons of bauxite produces two tons of aluminium. So first process is converting bauxite to aluminium. As we have said, this is the grinding etc. which is taking place. This is the digestion which is happening. Digestion is when you had added sodium hydroxide. Remember? Yes. Uh, do you remember the temperature, etc.? This is the temperature. The time is also mentioned. This is what we had studied. You will get sodium aluminate from sodium aluminate. From so sodium aluminate, you will go for settling tanks. From settling tank, again, the impurities will be removed. Oxide of iron and silica will get removed, and then you will have these precipitators. In precipitators. if you remember in precipitate in precipitators basically you will be getting aluminium hydroxide aluminium hydroxide would be precipitated out by adding can you see this alumina seed crystals are added yes sir now these aluminium hydroxide that you get it is taken to a calcinator calcinator is nothing except you heat can you see these temperatures the aluminium hydroxide that you have the aluminium hydroxide that you got here sorry the aluminium hydroxide can you see this aluminium hydroxide this aluminium hydroxide is taken to a calcinator where at a temperature of 1100 degrees celsius you get al2o3 yes. any doubt till here no doubt so aluminium hydroxide is heated and you get uh, you get pure aluminium any doubt till here no doubt now if you want to just recollect the the reactions we have done till till here one is you take bauxite the impure bauxite you add caustic soda to it if you remember the temperature was increased so that you could get sodium aluminate eliminate this reaction is okay yes sir if you remember this reaction took 1 to 2 hours and it was done under pressure then you took this sodium aluminate you took the sodium aluminate now what you want is you want to precipitate aluminium hydroxide that is why you will reduce the temperature so that more and more precipitation can happen so aluminium hydroxide gets precipitated out and you have naoh again any doubt till here no doubt if you remember this was a slow process it took around 2 days now the third process that you can see is you take this aluminium hydroxide and you subject this to very high temperature so that it leaves this water which is trapped inside you burn this at 1100 degrees celsius so that you get al2o3 This is the reaction that I am repeating. Thus, three H two and this H two is vaporized. Any doubt here? No. So basically, this is the production of alumina. Starting from bauxite, what we have done is starting from bauxite, starting from bauxite to alumina is the Beer's process. Any doubt till here, Mr. C B? No. And we have seen the practical examples, etc. Also, I think that would have given you a fair amount of uh, uh, the. the practical things how it is done so now we are at the second part of the process this second part is in as per a flow diagram once you have got this uh, alumina once you have got this alumina this alumina feed i'll change the color this alumina feed is taken to these if you remember uh, the word which was used was pots is taken to these pots where you will be generating aluminum and oxygen mr cb are we clear till here yes sir so we have uh, covered this part of our syllabus and now we are moving on to the second part now if you see they are asking description of the changes occurring they are asking the purpose of the substances used and the main reaction with their equations now if you ask me a uh, lot of time lot of time 
the question which is asked is purpose of the substances used and this purpose of the substances used it comes from the it comes from the second part of the process mr cb am i clear yes sir so usually we'll see cryolite uh, we'll see fluorospar etc we'll of course we'll discuss in the next 5 minutes but what i wanted to tell you was that in this uh, in extraction of albumin most of the questions most of the important questions would be asked in the second part of the process any doubt here no doubt okay now let us try to understand okay so now we we have this albumin this albumin is ready for conversion to albumin at the smelter so smelter is the part where electrolysis will take place can you see this these yes, are sir. called these are called pots in most plants the pots are lined in a long rows called pot lines have you understood so basically this aluminum smelting which is taking place at so you see these lines you see these lines yes sir these lines would consist of pots and in these pots large amount of electricity is used so you should be having good amount of electricity at your disposal so that you are able to do the smelting part okay now let us try to understand what is happening in the smelters okay okay now this is how a typical pot will look like so this is the hell harold's process uh, there's a very interesting uh, story behind this also that uh, we'll discuss some other time but broadly this is what is happening what do we know is in a typical electrolysis process that we had done previously so typically how we see electrolysis is this is how we see electrolysis so there this would be the positive end this would be the negative end let us see any doubt no no this would be the cell uh, this we call as this we call as uh, anode and this we call as cathode so for example uh, which is the simplest electrolysis that you remember let us see uh, the simplest copper sulfate uh, simpler than that uh, hcl okay yeah but so see any simpler the most simpler the most simplest uh so fused lead bromide fused lead bromide correct fused lead bromide so do you remember what happened in fused lead bromide sir uh bromine was evolved at anode and lead was deposited at cathode shabash sure, shabash sure. so basically you will be getting two ions one would be pb2 plus the other would be 2 br negative now this the positive would rush to the would rush to the cathode would rush to the cathode and the negative one will rush to the anode anode shabash sure. so basically at anode what will happen is these two br negative will get converted to br2 br2 and so this is the reaction which is taking place at the anode anode do you see any color change at anode sir a brown gas is evolved reddish yes brown reddish sir. vapors of bromine any doubt here no doubt and this is happening at anode and what is happening at cathode sir so at the cathode uh, lead is deposited lead is deposited it takes two electrons and lead is deposited silvery gray if you remember silvery gray yes sir now why i took this example was see remember this is fused lead bromide so you won't have any you won't have any h or oh negative ones have you understood what i said yes so that is fused now why i took this example was that in a typical electrolysis that you have covered in the previous chapter you have this anode and a cathode electrodes which you can see but in this reaction which we will do what will happen is that whole of this container would be made as a cathode and you will have these anode electrodes like this have you understood what i said yes sir so what i'm trying to tell you is what i'm trying to tell you is so please do not get confused at this stage this whole of container the whole of the container is a cathode have you understood yes sir the whole of the container is a cathode and you have these anodes which you will which will look like this any doubt till here no doubt now why this is made so of course we will see this uh, in detail shortly but i just wanted to before i start i wanted to tell you so this whole of this is anode so this is how you can put it this is connected to the positive end of the terminal and this is con connected to the negative end of the terminal the reactions which are taking place if you look at this uh, carefully the reaction which will be taking place so you have albumin which you have received from the first process now this albumin has basically al 3 plus ions and these are the cations and these are the anions so looking at these only can you tell me where you will find albumin uh, where you will get the aluminum ion uh, where they will rush to so they would rush to uh, the uh, anode the anode or the cathode uh, the cathode sorry the cathode. Cathode. now no, this, this container is itself is a cathode have you understood what i have said 
yes sir the container the container itself is a cathode so basically what i'm trying to tell you is that alumina aluminum which is being made will slowly start depositing at this container itself have you understood yes sir and where will these uh, oxygen ions go so oxygen ions will go towards the anode will go towards right the right. anode so you will have oxygen here have you understood yes, yes sir of course these anode these anodes are made up of carbon and of course the temperature here is also great it is approximately 950 degrees celsius high temperature so can you guess what will happen to these anodes slowly so they will start corroding bravas they will start corroding corroding in a sense that they will start reacting with this oxygen which is being formed they might either form carbon monoxide or they will form the co2 have you understood yes sir and that is why you know periodically this will start getting eaten up these anodes will start getting eaten up have you understood what i have said yes sir. and they will need to be replaced any doubt till here no doubt pakka yes sir no doubt so now let us go to the detail and try to understand what exactly is happening so what i am trying to tell you is that these anodes will have to be gradually replaced because they will keep reacting with the oxygen which is liberated and this is what i was telling you that this container do you see this container this container yeah. itself is if you see they have written gas carbon lining gas carbon is a allotrope of uh, uh, of carbon it is just like the carbon electrodes that you use in uh, in the electrolysis chapter that you have done so this is the this is the lining this is the lining actually the container on the outside would be made up of iron but it would have a lining of gas carbon which will act as a it will act as a let's see me uh, it will act as a cathode any doubt yes the, the entire container is the yes the entire container will act as a cathode and you will have anodes here any doubt is here no. and these anodes will have to be replaced again and again periodically because they will keep reacting with the oxygen which is generated any doubt no doubt now we'll discuss uh, we'll zoom in a bit and try to understand more things about uh, this there are two names that you need to remember one is cryolite the other is fluorspar mr cb would you be able to do this uh yes sir what are the two names a cryolite and fluorspar what are the two names cryolite and fluorspar fluorspar yeah now first we will try to understand that the alumina that we received why do, do we why do we add these two why do we add these two to the alumina that we have got from the beers process let's try to understand that okay see the alumina that you get from the first process it melts at 2050 degree celsius it requires huge amount of energy plus what starts happening is at such huge temperatures the aluminum which will get formed that also starts uh, evaporating have you understood yes sir see the boiling point of aluminum is around 25 degree celsius so you are almost within the reach of the uh, the boiling point of aluminum have you understood yes so that is why a ratio of 1 is to 3 is to 1 is taken so that the mixture starts boiling at 950 degree celsius so from a requirement of 25 degree celsius you have brought down the requirement to 950 degree celsius mr cb what will it do to the process how will it help us sir uh, excessive uh, energy is not uh, like energy is saved electrical and shabash huge amount of energy saving is done huge amount of energy saving is done and how will the energy saving help us so energy saving in the sense it will reduce cost reduce cost reduce cost reduce cost of what cost of manufacture of aluminum aluminum yes so aluminum that you will get would be cheaper and that yes, is sir. why at one time aluminum was more costly than gold but after the scientist discovered this uh, process of hall herald the cost of alumina came down and it doubted here no doubt so hall was a young scientist hall was a young scientist so he discovered this process that if you take this ratio to be 1 is to 3 is to 1 so you take the ratio of alumina cryolite and uh, uh, calcium fluoride then you will see that the cost will come down and it doubted here no doubt yeah so this happened around uh, this happened around 1886 1886 hall was the scientist hall was the scientist a young scientist who did this i'll see if i can find any photograph of hall on google one second mr cb can you see the wiki page mr cb can you see the wiki yes sir yeah. yeah so if you see mr hall and mr harold both were 22 years old when they made this discovery in 1886 have you understood so they made the 
discovery simultaneously. So this was Mr. Charles Hall and this was Mr. Harold. Both, uh, if you see, uh, he was the inventor of aluminium electrolysis and was the first successful commercial electric car for us. He lives in, he lived in. And this is Mr. Harold. He is best known as invention, inexpensive way. Can you see this? Inexpensive way. Yes, sir. So these are the two guys. And uh, another interesting thing is that uh, Mr. Hall went on to open the first large scale aluminium production in Pittsburgh. It became the Alcoa Corporation. Any doubt? No, no. And uh, there is another very interesting. See, aluminium produced via the Hall-Hall process in combination with cheaper electric power helped make aluminium an inexpensive commodity rather than a precious metal. So at one time, aluminium used to be a precious metal. Have you understood? Yes. See, the method was complicated and consumed material that were themselves inexpensive. This means the cost of produce small aluminium was made in was very high, higher than gold or platinum. Bars of aluminium were exhibited along with French crown ju jewels at the exposition Universal and Emperor was said to have reserved his few set of aluminium dinner plates and eating utensils for his most honest guests. So this is how expensive aluminium used to be at one time. But after this process, the cost of uh, the process came down drastically. Any doubt in there? Mm -hmm. Now let us see what do these uh, things, how, how these two things helped in bringing down the cost. So they brought down the temperature to 950 degrees Celsius. They increase the conductivity. Th these are the important questions which are usually asked. So they increase the conductivity. They increase the mobility of the ions, and they act as a solvent of for cryolite and alumina. Any doubt till here? No doubt. So once the cost was bro brought down, once the you know the melting point of the mixture was brought down, the cost was brought down, which helped us in the making aluminium more accessible. More accessible. Okay. Now there are few things that you need to understand. One is the voltage used is 5 to 6 volts. The current which is used is 100,000 amperes to 150,000 amperes. There should be any doubt. All right. Now, in one of the books that I was reading, the temperature which was mentioned was 100 ampere. But uh, it is not 100 ampere, it is large amount of current is required. Any doubt till here? No doubt. So, the cathode we have discussed is made up of uh, gas carbon or it is uh, graphite. Anode is carbon rods, which can be which can be removed easily so that because it will be used in the production, it, it is used when oxygen is produced in the reaction. Now there is a coke power covering. If you see this uh, process again, you will see this coke coke powder covering. Now what is the use of the coke power covering? It prevents burning of carbon anodes. It tries to prevent, but still the burning of carbon anode, carbon anodes happens. It prevents heat losses. So you know if this is not covered properly, a lot of heat losses will be happening. So the carbon the coke powder basically helps in maintaining the temperature. It prevents heat losses due to radiation. Any doubt till here? No doubt. Another thing that you will see is there is a control lamp which is there. Now the control lamp basically tells us that once the alumina is used up, once the alumina is used up, so then this uh, the voltage of the the voltage will increase because the resistance increases. Once aluminium ions start getting used up, the, the more and more aluminium is being produced. More and more aluminium is being, being produced. The quantity of Al3 plus decreases. The resistance of the solution increases. Once the resistance increases, this lamp lights up. When the light control lamp lights up, it is a, basically a signal to put more amount of uh, the mixture, this mixture, inside the pot. Any doubt till here? No doubt. Okay. Now, finally, these are the reactions that you need to remember, which will be happening in the electrolysis part. So, the first is the first is the decomposition of cryolite. The second is the decomposition of low spar. The first is the decompose. The third is the decomposition of alumina. Now, the decomposition is pretty simple. You have three Na positive. You have one Al. You have six F. You have one Ca. You have two fluorine. You have two aluminium ions. You have three oxygen ions. So the decomposition reaction it is pretty simple. What we need to understand is basically in the container you will have these ions floating. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six ions floating in the container. Now let us try to understand what will happen. So you have Na positive, you have Al plus 3, you have Ca plus 2 and on the other side you have F negative and you have O2 negative. Now the preferential discharge takes place of oxygen here and aluminium here. There should be any doubt. No, no. Now once aluminium and uh, aluminium ion gets discharged, you will get the aluminium metal which is collected at the base and when oxygen discharge it forms something which is called nascent oxygen now nascent oxygen nascent is newly born freshly formed 
so this is highly reactive this nascent oxygen is highly re reactive in chemistry you will usually find these nascent species so you will find <coughs> nascent oxygen you will find nascent hydrogen you will find nascent chlorine so whenever you find nascent oxygen or nascent hydrogen or nascent chlorine they are highly reactive they are freshly formed in a reaction and they are highly reactive so this nascent oxygen gets converted into oxygen the diatomic oxygen the nascent oxygen can react with the coke to form carbon monoxide carbon monoxide can react with this oxygen to form co2 both of these are liberated this oxygen this oxygen is the one which will react with the anode and that is why that anode would have, have to be this anode has to be replaced again and again any doubt mr cb no doubt so this is so if you see the volt is only 5.25 but if you see the temperature we are at 100000 and more can you see this yes and uh, this molten aluminum settles down and it is siphoned off so the carbon dioxide escapes and uh, so rest is easy yeah and yeah some other interesting facts it's continuous the production is continuous 24 hours year round the smelter cannot be stopped and restarted can you see this yes sir so if the production is interrupted by power supply of more than 4 hours the metals in the pot will solidify often requiring an expensive rebuilding process the cost of building a typical modern smelter is around 1.6 billion can you see this yes sir now do you see the name of the company alcoa alcoa this is the same company used by uh, found by mr hall and the uh, aluminum which is formed is 99% pure the aluminum is uh, highly ductile it can be put into wires it is malleable it can be beaten into sheets and in the next lecture now two topics are remaining from this part actually two very small topics are remaining from metallurgy one is the common ores of iron aluminum and zinc the other is uh, definition of alloys alloys of aluminum uh, the properties of uh, the properties of alloys and uses of the alloys any doubt mr sidi no no